For that, I uh, want to talk more about uh, the race for a coronavirus vaccine and which companies are leading the pack. Joining us right now is Jared Holtz, uh, healthcare equity strategist at Jefferies. Good morning to you. Uh, Jared, help us through this. Uh, you look at uh, the big companies that you think have, have an opportunity to, to help us here, but also let's talk about the economics of doing that, Jared. Andrew, good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so clearly the market's been very focused on what players, what companies are going to be involved in right. treating coronavirus globally. And I think it basically comes down to um, somewhat of a race to find a vaccine that's appropriate for use in humans. And what's happening now is we're, we're going day to day, headline to headline, to determine or assess which of these companies is going to come out with an appropriate treatment. So you mentioned Moderna earlier, right. Gilead, J&J, &J, AbbVie. There are, there are many companies um, on this list that are, that are looking for a vaccine. It just doesn't seem like, you know, we as an investor base really know what is going on until these vaccines are put in humans, which is an ongoing situation. And there's no way to handicap which company you think is farther along in the race or, or more behind, for example? Joe, it seems like Gilead is probably the largest company, um, and they happen to be in the lead by most accounts. Uh, the company has confirmed that they have a phase one trial in China right. um, with two dosing arms that could read out as early as April. So you're talking about five or six weeks uh, for the company to understand whether they have an, a treatment they could be a viable option for patients in China. So, you're so not if that's the case, now. they seem to be. You're, now you're talking therapeutics when you talk Gilead, because we, we were, I thought we were still talking about vaccines. You talk, this is Joe there, now, but, but you're talking about a therapeutic. This, yes, this will be a vaccine. This is oh, the, vaccine. the same drug that Gilead, this is the same vaccine that Gilead used uh, to treat certain Ebola patients years ago that they're sort of resurrecting for coronavirus. So we'll see if it works. Again, the company is saying about five or six weeks roughly uh, before they have the results in China. And then Moderna is obviously moving into clinical trials in the U.S., J&J, &J, Glaxo, AbbVie, or other companies that are, that are experimenting with vaccines in, in their uh, portfolios, as well as Regeneron and, and many other uh, small and micro-cap stocks in biotech that have been super volatile over the past so, couple weeks. Jared, with cancer, when you say vaccine, it could be both a preventive and a treatment. So I'm wondering, are you talking about something that prevents it? Or have you talked at all about therapeutics? And, and do, does any of the existing HIV compounds that, that, are, that work against HIV, protease inhibitors, do any of those seem effective in dealing with the, the actual, if you already have coronavirus? Well, that's the interesting question, Joe, that we're trying to... Um, sort of assessed over the next couple of weeks is whether these vaccines are going to be used uh, in a traditional sense, meaning prophylactically before these patients right. are infected, or if they're going to be used once a patient is infected in a doctor's office, in a hospital setting, et cetera. My understanding so far, the way that most of the companies are discussing their pipelines is that these vaccines will be used as more of a treatment option for these patients rather hmm. than every country, every patient in China um, getting the vaccine before they have it. I so see. most of the companies that have been discussing the, these vaccines, are, they are going to be used therapeutically once right. a patient is diagnosed. Jared, real quick, and, uh, and uh, maybe this is an uncouth question, but since we're a business channel, um, what are the economics mm -hmm. of a successful vaccine like this? Joe, I think there, it's immaterial um, at best for, at least for the larger companies. I mean, you're looking at many countries in the developing world which are susceptible to viruses such as coronavirus. Um, for companies like Gilead that do north of 20 billion in revenue a year, it seems to have a, will have a very, very small impact on their business, um, as well as most of the other companies we're talking about as well. And then you have the situation with compassionate use, giving these drugs away for free to, you know, certain geographies that cannot afford them, working with health organizations around the world. So from a business standpoint, from a pure financial standpoint, and this is one of the things that investors seem to be really grappling with, is the real impact that some of these drugs are going to have on financials.